the first thing is to make sure that we get the reed seat firmly inserted and into the base of the drone. So the reeds come in two parts, actually in three parts of the white plug. I'll explain that more later. Take off the reed base and we need to insert this into the reed seat firmly. There's a wee groove in the reed seat here. If you take your hemp and pull it through the groove like an old cotton reel, this allows you to get a good firm grip onto the plastic. Then by keeping the hemp firm, come down leaving about not quite a quarter of an inch, three sixteenth of an inch at the bottom and then take the hemp back up. Do that several times using yellow or black waxed hemp. Make sure it is a waxed hemp and preferably insert more hemp onto the wax, uh, sorry, more wax onto the hemp. I'm just doing this fairly quickly. You should take your time, get this nice and even. Nice and tight. Once you're nearly there, the reason I said to leave a wee gap is then you can squeeze it in, squash it, and it will then come down and not come off the end. And I'll leave a small gap there so if you do get any moisture, if you happen to have moisture coming down your drones, it would collect there and not run down into the reed. Take one final turn and then do a half hitch. Cut it of about an inch, inch and a half left and insert it right up to the shoulder so it's firmly in and you should be able to pick it up and it's not going to come out and it's not going to wobble. If that's loose you're not going to get a steady drone sound and you'll probably find that the drone will continuously stop. I then leave that down the side so when that goes into the drone it also acts that my reed is never going to fall into my back. I don't have to worry about that. So that's firmly in. That's Once you've got to that stage, you can then put the reed on. Now, for pitch, i.e. where the drone tunes, and ideally you want the drone just to tune on the hemp, by pushing this up makes it shorter, the drone will tune higher. By making it longer, you'll make it flatter and the drone will tune lower. So it's very easy to adjust, no screws to leak and you move that. Once you put this on, people say, I don't push that, I get that firmly in. Once that's firm, then you put that on so there's no need to push from the bottom to make sure that the reed's tight. You can adjust it. Once it's adjusted, you don't need to, if you change your chant to read or you're playing a band, you can easily adjust the reeds to change the pitch. The white plug at the bottom acts as an on-off switch. Initially, what I was trying to do was eliminate the bridle and make it as a softer or quieter or louder. It does work slightly by turning it and making the aperture smaller, makes it slightly quieter. If you do it too much, it will make the reed unsteady. So my advice is that you leave the white plug in the open position. However, if you want to, you can turn it completely around, 180 degrees, and you switch the drone off. No need for corks. So that's nice and easy. The most vital and important thing is adjusting the bridle. 
most of these reads come out with the same uh, preset. Preset to what? Preset to my pipes, preset to the pressure I play at. So when you put the reads in your pipes, you have to get the reads set up. Ideally, you want the drone reads just to take a bit more air than your chanter read, i.e. just so if you blow your chanter read hard, the drone reads would cut out. So, just the more minute, and I'm talking no more than a hair's width, alteration to the bridle makes a huge difference to the, to the reed. Not just in blowing strength, but also in pitch. And if you want to make it a wee bit quieter, you just pull it down, touch it down, make the tongue shorter to make it quieter, make the tongue longer, and that will make it louder. When you shut it off, it will be airtight. If, and only if you have a reed that is continuously stopping because you're playing quite a hard chanter reed or a very hard chanter reed, you can insert a knife under here. If you take the bridle all the way back, it'll become very flat. But you can insert a knife up to the bridle and just flick it up slightly. But that's a last resort, works perfectly fine, but it's only really need to do that if you find that you're playing a very hard chant to read and the drone continuously stops. And it will hold that memory for quite a time. All three reads should be set up. I recommend if you are setting up drone reads that what you should ideally do if you already have drone reads in is change one at a time. This is the way we always did it with Kane. Start off by changing one read Try it against the other reeds, get it balanced, then change the other reed rather than take all three out, put in three and try it. With the base reed, ideally what you want to do is keep it as long as possible normally. Base drones should tune on the bottom joint about one inch above the ivory. Normal tuning for the top joint, but you don't really want the bottom joint tuning in the normal position for the tenor drones. Note the best sound is normally achieved about one inch there. For my reed, what you want to do is keep it as long as possible on the stem and the tongue or the bridle tuning on the third moisture groove. You'll find that there's three, wait, there's four moisture grooves on the bass drone and there's three on, on the tenor drones. On the bass drone, you want the bridle sitting over the third moisture groove. If you pull the bridle down too far, you might find that the drone squeals when you strike it in. It'll also probably have a very thin sound and not a deep sound. So